start you off the easy one. What was it about Oregon that you want to come here? Um, really, the coaching staff, um, Coach Landing, and like the environment. Um, everybody's everybody that's here has been nice so far. So it really stood out when I was choosing the school. What was that process like for you? The, the portal is a hot topic now in college athletics. Just what was your experience? What was that process like? Yeah. Um, so like, I didn't want it to be just like high school. I didn't want to get too overwhelmed and you know take a long time to make a decision. I'm really trying to choose a school and get prepared for the season. So. Um, I kind of had a couple schools that I really wanted to pick from, and then Oregon really stood out. So that was how I made my decision. Dan was a big recruiter out of, out of high school for yeah. you. How much did that just play a factor? And you already had a prior relationship. You kind of knew what Dan was about. Yeah, it um, played a pretty big role. Um, probably coming out of high school, he's probably one of my favorite coaches that recruited me. So, you know, um, when choosing a school, I, that was like something I took in. You know, who could I like? have a relationship with and I already had one with him so I was another you know key to coming here you've seen a lot of coaches in your life had a lot of relationships is that kind of a, a unique one with him do you think he has a bit of a, a unique ability to have those relationships those sustained relationships over several periods of time that can kind of help Oregon in the portal uh yeah you know the, the type of person he is and the way he like you know talks to your family you know builds that relationship yeah it, it did help a lot I know it helps a lot when he's recruiting all the time um and yeah, like I said, that was a key aspect. Of you said that Oregon stood out, yeah. other than your relationship with Dan. What else also made him stand above the rest? Um, well, for me, this was my first offer when I was in high school, like freshman year. You know, growing up, you always want to wear that jersey. Um, so that was another piece I wanted to like be a part of. I know that they've always been good, so that was like something I wanted to, you know, join, be a part of. Do you have any memories of playing as well in the SEC? Yeah, um, my freshman year, I like did a stunt, came in, and I almost sacked him, and he like threw a deep ball, completed it. I was like, that's crazy, but that was probably the best memory playing against him. So you got the the Birkin socks on. How's it kind of transitioning into the Pacific Northwest? Oh yeah, when I first got here, uh, I didn't expect it to be like this cold and you know rainy. I've never seen so much snow. <laughs> but um, so like now, I still I'll wear shorts when it's cold outside. But um, yeah, it's not bad now. I'm starting to like it more because it's not as rainy. So I'm coming along. So very, <laughs> very, very early in this media day, Dorless claimed that he's the best trash talker yeah. on the team. Uh, Terrence Ferguson pushed back on that, saying it's actually Bo Nix. Yeah. Um, Casey had some interesting thoughts on Bo being maybe number one. What are your your impressions of, of the, the debate here? Um, well, I haven't really played with them much, but um, uh, the stories they tell me that uh, Bo gets really fired up during games. Um, you can see it on film. Um, but yeah, but I don't really know. I don't really know much about it yet. When you decided to, to come here, was there something in particular you thought you could, you could bring to this, this team or, or, or the defensive line? Yeah, um, I noticed that some guys were leaving. Um, you know, I really wanted to be a part of this defense. I like the coaching staff and the game plan that they have set up. Um, so that's really what I was thinking about coming here, and I thought I could, you know, help the team in any way possible. What do you kind of like about the guys around you? You know, what, what you, I mean, obviously you haven't you know, played in the game with them yet, but just from what you see in practice and, and you know, hanging out outside of the team. Um, they're a hardworking group always. Um, and then any questions you have, you can ask them because, you know, I'm new. So if I had any questions about plays or anything, they're always there to help me out. And then. Outside of football, you know, getting extra work, that's something that I like a lot. So when you have that full group, you know, doing the same thing, it, um, you can tell, like, they're really serious about what they do. I asked Devin what he wanted to see the defense improve on year over year, and he said he wants the defense to be a feared unit. One, do you agree with that assessment? And two, what do you have to do on the field as a defensive line to make that possible? Yeah, I agree. Um, when you can, like, line up, you know, offensive line, Office linemen look at you and you know respect the group that's lining up. That's a really like it's a really big deal. Um, and for us this year, um, I feel like we got the pieces to do that. It um, it really doesn't take much. You just do what you're told. You know, and be athletic, play you know play your game. And I feel like we can do that this year. For Oregon fans who don't know you, what do you want them to know you as? I mean, who who are you? Who do, who should they think of you as? Um, I would say a hard worker. He's going to give everything he has. You know, to help the team win. Um, I'm unselfish, and um, yeah, I'm gonna do everything I, I can to help the team. Out.
from your perspective, Dan called this offseason a theme going from good to great. Just how have you seen this team kind of embrace that, that offseason theme for you guys? Um, yeah, like uh, looking at workouts, um, like strength and conditioning was, you know, towards the beginning, you know, some people might be out of shape, but I feel like now, like towards the end, you see people push, um, you know, give more effort than just the outside of practice, like the work that people's been doing and like helping the younger kids, like with the plays and figuring it out. Um, that's really like a big deal. I feel like that's really the main part from going good to great. And um, we've been seeing it so far. Are you someone who sets individual goals for yourself going into a year? If so, do you mind sharing any of them with us? Yeah, I do set goals. Um, I can't tell you all of them, but you know, some of them I would like to, you know, win a championship. That would, one of the main reasons I came here because I feel like Oregon has that group to do that. Um, and that's like a big goal for me. So coming out here, it wasn't just coming just to, you know, play, but be a part of a team that could do that. Amongst all the transfers that the team got this year, it seems like amongst fans, your name sticks out the most. Do you feel that that outside pressure, that expectation, and how does that affect your game and you as a fan? Um, yeah, I kind of feel it. I really don't you know, listen to like a lot of outside noise, but I know the fan base here is pretty big and engaged in football. Um, and for me, I just, you know, take it day by day. I don't really try to listen too much, not to get too high or too low. Um, so yeah, that's really. How is the urge to get inside Austin for the first time? I'm excited. Um, you know, we practice in there a couple of times, but it's nothing like, you know, they tell me on Saturday. Um, like I watch videos on YouTube, you know, try to get that feeling, but I, I heard it's nothing like it. So I'm really excited. I can't wait. When you watch YouTube, what are you impressed about? What are you looking at? Are you watching the shout? You yeah, the shout. Um, just paying attention to the crowd and like how the, you know, the team, you know, kind of gets that momentum from the crowd's energy. Um, that's a big part, and uh, that's really what I watch. Simple, simple question. What motivates you? Um, my family, being able to like. You know, growing up where I'm from, not a lot of people, you know, make it out, but they were like on me as a, as a, at a young age. So just being able to see how far I came with their help, that really motivates me. Like everything I do, I kind of try to do it for them. Who was the family members that motivated you? Is it everybody or was it one person in particular that really stuck on you? Uh, it's, it's really everybody. My grandparents, my mom, they just uh, stayed on me, you know, kind of kept me on the right path to be able to be where I'm at today. How do you feel like that transition Yeah, um, it's been like at first it was a little shaky trying to figure everything out, you know, and you learn a new defense. But after a while, you know, with the, you know, the crew around you, they make it more easy or well, make it easier because, you know, they're always helping me. Um, any questions I have, they'll answer for me. Mateo plays a similar role as you. Can you just take us into just what he brings and how he's come along? You guys both were really highly regarded yeah. recruits coming out of high school. Just yeah, he's, uh, he's really good. Um, you know, watching him, some of the moves that he does, a lot of people can't do. Um, he's athletic and a good player. He'll be a really good player for this defense. Yeah. Mm -hmm.